Hello and welcome to Four Beers In. I am Brendan. I'm Matt. Tammy. And uh, Marco is with the fam. So uh, by choice, Matt, last week you chose... Yes, this week I, I chose <laughs> something I'd read about a long, long time ago and wanted to revisit. It's people who are real-life superheroes. Yeah. So we were all to research uh, real-life superheroes and come with some of our favorites. So. Um, <laughs> Tam has Jerry rigged the microphone to kind of sit nicely for her. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I didn't do as much research as I probably did. I should have, but I did some, and I and I've got a couple things. But I don't want to start. I want to see like. So I, I guess I'm not really. I wasn't really thinking of like. Oh, I don't know. I donated marrow or something. Uh, one of those PSA real life superhero guys. But Tam, you were you were wondering before we recorded what makes a mm. superhero a well, superhero. You could there's, it's a huge topic really because you got your firefighters, your healthcare workers, your veterans. Um, there's it's huge of who you think would be well or a parent or something like on, on its face. I think you're right, but you're also like a. PSA blood donor commercial right now. <laughs> <laughs> the term itself, real life superhero, R L S H, is a thing that distinguishes a a certain Or is it people that change? It's, well, like Gandhi. Well, or like. Well, that's one of the tenets is that they do try to improve their, their community or their, their neighborhoods. But they almost exclusively have to wear costumes while doing it. And that seems to be the big distinguishing. And if you call the fireman a costume or an army soldier a oh, costume, oh, they will be so mad. They might not like that very much because it's there's, a uniform. There's just functional. Yes, superheroes don't have to be functional. They just kind of have to be this comic booky identity. And there are a shocking amount of people who try to do this every day. Most of them are non vigilante. They're trying to just activist, activist. Or activism. They more try than, to stand yeah. out, and a lot of them primarily seem to focus on the homeless. Mm. Um, some of them just try to watch, stand guard over bad neighborhoods and be a good witness. You know, there's a guy who's called the Statesman in Birmingham, England, and he is uh, against drug deals and robberies. And what he'll do is kind of walk around in a costume. What's it look like? Um, it's kind of Captain UK. It's kind of the Union Jack flag. Okay. The, is that what they call their flag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a Captain America, but with their colors, with their flag, the UK flag. Okay. And he'll kind of walk around and he he just kind of makes notes. He he writes pen and paper and he has a flashlight. He'll shine <laughs> on, on people. <laughs> it seems to be his ideal situation is to be a good witness to to be the, for the police. And the police, that's what they want you to be. They do not want you to be a vigilante in any way, but there are a few of those too. Any... any Superheroes that you like? Well, the first name that popped out was the the Crimson Canuck because that that that's catchy, and he actually like tagged up with a another like real life superhero, and this is in Canada, uh, Vancouver, and there was another one like Thorantos or something. I gotta I, I gotta have like the actual name. <laughs> it's not right if I don't say it right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know you're um, talking about, and I like him too. He's got my favorite origin story. Oh, Thonatos. really? Thonatos. That's who. And I was going to actually check on his origin story, but I hadn't really got to it yet by the time we decided that we we're going to do this. But I liked the Crimson Canucks little get up. Like he had like he had the, the red and black with the, the maple leaf. Like it's and as far as like a, a costume went, he he's got a good one. Um, he may have retired, but he might be coming back based on <laughs> what. He's like um, the Dread Pirate Roberts. Right. Right there. He's like the fourth Dread Pirate Roberts. <laughs> Uh, there, there was a post on um, realliferheroes.com or whatever it is that he might be kind of coming back in some way in an activism kind of form of way. Um, but he, he teamed up with the, the that one, the other guy that I already forgot the name Thanatos? of. Thanatos. Thanatos. <laughs> and a comic book store, and they would use the comic book store as the hub of how they got together and, and would communicate and talk. So that way everyone in the Providence could kind of watch over their areas. And, and so they kind of created this whole group of 
Canadian superheroes. And if you're going to be a superhero, do it in Canada where the worst crime is someone <laughs> spit on the sidewalk. <laughs> you run in with one of those curling brooms and clean it up really fast and then dash away, dash away, <laughs> dash away all. I was kind of, um, I, I, I was a little surprised to see how like the neighborhood watch was mentioned a lot when it came to definition of real life superheroes. Yeah, and it's funny because the neighborhood watch in this country has really fallen off. There used to be neighborhood watches, active ones, when I was a kid in the 80s. Not just signs up on the telephone poles, right. but a group of homeowners that would agree to go on patrols once in a while and take turns. That never happens, and maybe that's the reason this country's in the shitter now, but we well, don't even know our neighbors, let alone inter- watch their back. Well, <laughs> well that's them. just it. It's an interesting take on neighborhood watch, and how would people view that? Is it neighbors that are watching your back, or is it like, what 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 does it say that you feel the need to have neighbors th- yeah. doing patrols? I think it increasingly got to where it felt like even a neighborhood watch was putting yourself in harm's way, because mm. now... You're going to maybe get shot or something because everyone's got a gun in this country. And and where you used to be able to shine a flashlight on someone like you can in the UK, now you'll get an answer of a bullet back, you know. And it could be that unfortunate Trayvon Martin situation where, you know, the bad ones get into the neighborhood watch and they start harassing people that don't need to be harassed. And then horrible things escalate from that. Yeah, that's true. That could just go bad in a lot of different ways. Also, the movie night neighborhood watch sucked. <laughs> <laughs> that was that, just on the other day, too. The watch? The I, watch, yeah. They changed the title from the neighborhood watch to watch because of the Trayvon Martin oh, thing, and I won't right. even... I don't remember the main... The, the bad guy's name in that, and I won't try to in the Trayvon Martin, his killer. Oh, because why yeah. should he get his name said when yeah. Trayvon Martin was the victim? But they changed the title because of that. And um, I only watched it because the guy from the IT crowd was in it. And I can't remember how bad it was, but I remember not liking it. He was actually one of the funnier ones. He was one of the funnier ones. It Um, was kind of that cheesy... I don't know. It was an alien movie. Well, it was was a Ben Stiller movie in in, in some ways, too. Right. Well, God, now that you mentioned Ben Stiller, I can't... I just love uh, Mystery Men. Speaking of real life superheroes, Mystery Men. Uh uh-uh. uh. The Ben Stiller superhero movie. Didn't I don't think I've seen it. All right. You got homework. You gotta watch okay. Mystery Men. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about nothing's ben Stiller ring, yeah, movies. Nothing's one ringing of these a days. bill right right now. So Ben Stiller was Mr. Rage. <laughs> that was oh, his name. Interesting. <laughs> I could see that. But as long as we're in Canada still oh, talking you got about one. Good, Canadians, good. there is a well. Salt Lake City is not technically Canada, is it? It just feels like it when you're there. <laughs> it depends on if you're talking to a Colorado Rapids fan. <laughs> or not. There's actually uh, superhero collectives that I read about, and there is one. There are some in Canada, and there's one in Salt Lake that I watched a short documentary on called Black Monday. The Black Monday OG squad or something like that. I don't know. But it's basically a collective of these guys who dress up as superheroes and try to go out and make their neighborhood, their city, their play, um, areas nicer. And they're mostly homeless advocates. But it it's interesting. They must have asked him why he would even bother dressing up. If you're just going to help people, why do you need a costume? Right. I mean, would you, would you ever assume, like, in order to help anybody, I better put on a silly pair of tights <laughs> and a cape? I mean, how do you get from A to B? Yeah, m- more of these. Um, We're talking about Salt Lake City, so probably oh, not. Oh, probably uh, beer not. fuel. Uh, shit. Um, That's because they're making their own shit in the corner because they can't buy as much beer. What? So you're saying that the hard moonshine. alcohol, yeah, yeah. moonshine and huh? Moonshine. Mm. Um, well, according to the guy in the documentary, who's the head of the organization. I guess he's kind of a quiet, shy person, and he says in the costume he can be whoever he wants. He can literally be braver, be bolder, okay, be I can more get out, this. out. It's like the mask yeah. singer. <laughs> it's like the mask, yeah. 
It's yeah, like sure. The and then <laughs> add the singer part to it too, if you want to be more current or uh, yeah. No, and, and that, you're not recognized. You can do what you feel like. You feel like a superhero. I, I think I'm assuming that's it's like Halloween every time you go out. It's well, funny. We, most of them have. Most of them will tell you their name if you ask, but some of them, the vigilante ones, won't because they are operating outside the law. Most of the do gooders, <laughs> the do gooder guys. Generally, their name is like they do have their day job and they do have their identity, but then they're also Nighthawk or whatever they decide to be. And I can't remember all of their names or any of them really off the top of my head from from Salt Lake City. But I just thought it was kind of interesting. For I guess you can find each other nowadays. Well, but social media and yeah. phones and oh, yeah, yeah, sure groups and you find each other. But I just thought it was kind of interesting when he was talking about the confidence thing. I remember hearing that years and years ago about beards. Why there was an interview of a guy. I think he was a sidekick on a morning radio show and he grew a beard or he had a beard or something. They were asking him why. And he said, because I never had any confidence, but with a beard, I feel like I'm protected from hiding from the world. And I'm like, oh, oh, that made me think of um, Home Improvement, uh, Tim Allen and the other Richard Carn. Yeah. <laughs> Who Al was. Yeah. He had the beard and Tim Allen didn't. But yeah. Anyway. Well, I'm kind of the same way. Like I, I have a beard. I always will uh, because um. I don't feel comfortable without it. And I don't know if it's more psychological or what. No, but. I agree. I have the the goatee part. There's parts of my beard that doesn't grow, and I get subconscious about that. So then yeah. I trim or shave around it. But I've you always have. I hair, will always have some sort of facial yeah. hair. Yeah, I got to have some sort of facial hair. So I get it. Yeah, yeah. I have to have specific facial hair. I just don't like the way it, most of them look on me. But kind of there with you. I definitely <laughs> more than anything. I don't like having no facial hair. Mm-hmm. So the entire time until I was about 25, when I couldn't grow facial hair, I would just have whatever would grow and look terrible, but still feel better than I would if I clean shaved. I feel really huh. bad because there might be a small chance that my son hears this, but that's him right now. He's oh, my son he's too. got about like. 25 yeah, I don't get why you sandy have that. blonde <laughs> chin hairs and and the thing is is I did that too that's like yeah I have Scooby and, and, and you, it, it, shaggy. I think shaggy. he's right. got a shaggy beard I, and, and I think it's it's a young male's self-awareness and and the or lack of self-awareness it's kind of fun you have you just have no idea how you, you really respond look. to it because i can grow this tiny little bit right. yeah and then at the end when you're losing it and then you pointy tail because I, I still got this tiny little bit <laughs> it's on the back end now <laughs> <So you almost laughs> get it. before and after desperation oh. <laughs> i went from riding a tricycle to a motorcycle with two wheels in the back <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I remember when my son asked me about growing a beard, and I told him, well, you're you're Asian, so there's a good chance oh, no. you won't be able to grow a beard uh, in full. So, you know, you never know. Some Asians can and look and, great. And then he, you put him in the movies. Yeah, Judge Ito, he had a beard. He didn't look great, <laughs> but he had a beard. <laughs> Boy, that shows the collective age of this podcast. Oh, Just no. saying that name and not having to explain who it is. Right. <laughs> But yeah, I was like, oh, I'm sorry to break it to you, boy, but uh, you may never have a beard like me <laughs> or anyone at all. But yeah, that just kind of resonated with me. Like, yeah, I understand, totally get the idea of wanting to hide behind something and getting confidence. So that, that leads me I to... I think we all do that. Well, I was just going to say that leads me to a question, which maybe it's too soon and we can revisit it if it is and you guys need time to think about it. But what would your superhero costume or colors would what would they be yeah i'll have to think about that right like take some time and think about that we'll have to and maybe end <laughs> what, the show what, on what would your, power what would your costume <laughs> and power or yeah real power because this is something that i feel like and again these are real life people these are real most life people in real life power. causes there's right. there's no powers here involved most of them but right yeah and there you, are those vigilante types like phoenix jones in Seattle, who has mad MMA skills, um, but he's one that the police wish didn't exist because 
he will chase you down and tackle you. And, and actually beat the shit out of you. He carries, he wears a, a bulletproof vest with stab plate. Uh, he what? carries a stun baton, which I assume <laughs> is a oh, cattle dude, prod. I think you oh, found like the most. Like, <laughs> he whoa. carries pepper spray. He's been arrested for using pepper spray. <laughs> He's got handcuffs. There's surveillance video of him pinning a guy down on a big grate on the floor. But he said he was a, was a carjacker, a car thief, and he chased him down tackled him and cuffed him but he's pinning him down on this big metal grate in the street of, of seattle oh, what's his costume like oh he's kind of wolverine like oh yeah kind of he's got like black i think it's black and then with a like a, an orange v or something Ooh. on his chest interesting he looks Vanguard. pretty legit but he does you know he does have that skill of being a badass mma fighter and i don't know his origin story but i'm sure it came from being victimized mm. and not liking that one bit <clears throat> so he, he's one of those guys the police are like, don't. Was don't he one of the that. like most aggressive in- vigilantes that you found in your research? Or He was the most aggressive vigilante. The, yeah, that sounds like holy shit. Because th- there's one like, so Lionheart. Did... No, I don't know that one. He, so Liberia, South Africa. Um, so for him, it's clean drinking. Liberia's not South Africa. It's, um, it's Africa. Yeah, it's okay. the country of Liberia, which is Western North Africa. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> no, for real, real, because that's not how any of what I. Yes. <laughs> anyway, this although guy, South Africa's got to have some badass <laughs> superheroes in it. Where uh, it it is an African proverb because of tomorrow, but um, he basically started. He got separated from his family and had to do this massive trek by himself across the entire country to get to them only to basically see murder and shit. And so for him, it was like, I, I can't stand for this and I got to help my countrymen. And it, it kind of dials down or distills down. Hey, 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 <laughs> into drinking water is his main cause and, and educating the tribes and citizens of Africa that, like, you can't just drink this creek water. Yeah, we know you can't go buy bottled water, but if you drink this creek water, you'll shit till you die. Like, that's that's what's happening there. So for him, that's a major cause, plus traffic, tra- child trafficking and stuff oh, yeah. like that. So that's a big thing there. So those are the things that he advocates for and is trying to educate what is, that do you know country. His, do you know his methods? Um Besides just going out there, is he is he hand billing it? Is he one at a timing? Is he just kind of a little bit catch people about to drink from the gutter and say, "Wait a minute, wait a minute, we need to rise up and make the government clean our water." More of the rise up as he started by doing it, kind of like the hand billing, mm-hmm. you know, door to door, you know, hey, 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 don't drink out of this creek. You know, Grandpa shit himself to death. <laughs> like that. That's what really happened. That's horrible. But in. in then there are like the young children that like get promised all, all the things that they're going to get. And then it becomes a traffic thing. So oh, yeah, it, for him, it's, it's all about education. So yeah. it, it, it started off with just him. And then there's, uh, I mean, I didn't do as much reading as I probably should have to be able to continue talking about this, but it, it, it really was kind of the human trafficking was his second choice because it, it started with water and then like, I, I, I am bigger than this and he had supporters. And, and so now I, I, I don't have a, a thing of costume. There's like an illustration. It's, I mean, when it comes to African things, sometimes their art is just awesome. Um, but it, it really is. It, it's almost kind of like a, a vision out of the mask with a ghost kind of yeah. looking thing. But did, and Lionheart's a pretty cool name. Yeah. Right. And, and so it reminds I, me of a Care Bear, but still, it's a pretty cool name. Well, the one thing I do remember reading about that was for him, he chose that they're in their region, they have the most lions. Mm-hmm. And for him, it was he felt like he was going to be the heart of, of his nation and try to better their education on, on how to live with what they're going through right now. Cause yeah. there's only so much you can do. And I felt like that's what I took from this one guy is like, like okay. I've I'm heard. only one dude, and, and, and this is what I can do. I got no real name, no not like, so when you were like, some of them will come over to not these, but I don't know if he, in his country and region, he might be a vigilante, though. Depends on. I mean, because he's against he's the, the corrupt government, too. Mm-hmm. 
So we, we all should be against the corrupt government, right? But if we were to do if that, that as makes Americans, us vigilantes, then, that then that's a corruption bad. of the government <laughs> in itself. Um, I think the name Lionheart definitely could use a reboot because Richard Lionheart, uh-huh. the most famous Lionheart in history, was be famous for what the Crusades, right? Forcibly. Which converting perspective Muslims, could <laughs> <laughs> forcibly converting Muslims to Christianity or dying or right, killing them? Like right. that's, that's there's there's not a lot of heroism in. We that. look at Lionheart as a hero, but he is a villain of history. If you're a cosmopolitan minded human being mm-hmm. who thinks other people have a right to live, so I'm all for that name, Lionheart. Take that back. Make it good. Right. One of my favorite names is Super Barrio Gomez out oh, of Mexico. Oh, yes. I, I, I skimmed <laughs> across of, that name, and, I, yeah. and I, I meant to click on it, too. Speaking of... Um, that's a good name. And he's got a good costume. Speaking of those... Yeah, he's like a <laughs> Lucha a Libra. Car. He's like a Lucha Libra, right? Yes, And yes. he's got the car. Yes. But yeah, he, uh, he organizes labor rallies, and he files petitions against evictions for people, and that must be... A hell of a task this day and age if he's still practicing. Did did you read his origin story or does he have one no, that you can? No, I didn't. Because I wonder if it, there's some law education in there. If if you're helping, he at least knows how to fill out a form, right? <laughs> by now, like <laughs> I'll bet you he just knows how to talk circles around people. But he's devoted his energy to labor rights and housing rights in Mexico. I, I think that's a wonderful thing. Wonderful yeah. Cause. That was definitely a good reading for but like, just, I didn't a great do name. a whole lot. Super Barrio this, Gomez. Yeah, Super <laughs> Barrio Gomez. Like that, <laughs> that was on my list of like, Ooh, I want to put this guy on my, li-. and I was about to ask you if he was on your list. Cause I knew you might have a list cause <laughs> you're awesome at this sh- research shit. Like, <laughs> well, but, Tammy, have you got any on your list or anything yeah, that stuck out like for you? Mine is way off from what, is yeah, Tammy way off. In costumes. That'll that'll like, be I, your. I look at Bob Geldof. Like who is this? Bob Geldof. I think Tammy Tammy he... misses the point. Could be your superhero identity. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wear a costume. <laughs> but, I see him as a hero because he. Bob he's, Geldof yeah, is I mean, who like again? He's gotten all. I mean, I know the name, but he's not the wizard from the Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Right? No, he's an Irishman, uh-huh. but. Well, he's an Irish citizen, but he did in the eighties the huge like he got all the money and eighties po- girl. That's Tammy. Poverty super and he He like, got all the money. Helped out Africa. He like do you remember that? Like how he Wait, are you- did he organize Was Live he Aid, like Band-Aid? Yes, Band-Aid. I was okay. but just gonna for ask- many of his years I mean he he really did help poverty. Poverty. Did he wear yeah. a costume? Which and then, Lionheart well, had something to do with AIDS too. I mean, I might be a sweatshirt and jeans, but he wore whatever. <laughs> That's a costume. <laughs> all right, keep talking while right, I look up right, the. So I, I had him, and then you're gonna think I'm stupid because I'm like, think of animals. I almost think dogs are the Sarah best. Sarah McLaughlin. No. <laughs> A real life superhero. I think a real life superhero is an animal. They have costumes. If you think of like they are medical and they seek out seizures before you have them, and then you have like. But you're confusing hero I know, with superhero. I know. That's what, what like, makes to me, they're heroes. Well, super- here's the definition of an RLSH. Specifically, this term, a real life superhero, but then is I'm a person. Up and, like, people do dress up, and like there's one in. Wait, a- wait, 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 wait. Okay. A person Canada. who dresses up in a superhero costume or mask in order to perform community service, such as neighborhood watch, or in some cases, vigilantism. Mm. The superhero costume or mask is compulsory in this definition. So, so you have to wear a mask because everyone wears a costume. Oh, come on. You. <laughs> Well, if you were Billy Joel, wow. you would say everyone wears a mask. <laughs> Elton John does. <laughs> He's a superhero. The words right Elton out of John. Is Billy Joel a superhero? He's got that whole song about masks we wear. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Wow. The Stranger. The Stranger. Come on. Billy Joel. The right. Stranger. Well, well I so I was thinking more saying. the pretender was... Jackson Brown. Well, sure. He's a, kinda, he's a superhero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he plays piano, right, Tammy? That's yeah. all it takes. Well, he yeah. he plays more than piano. He <laughs> plays a whole bunch of instruments and won't stop unless he's hey. got to pee his pants. Is uh, is is the Kiss guys? Are they superheroes? Whoa, they were. They, they were costume. And one time on Scooby Doo, Twisted they Sister. Crime. What? They on fucked Scooby Doo, didn't they fight crime on Scooby Doo? Oh, they like did the, fight crime. They did help yeah. the kid. The kid. 
the Those kid. meddling kids. <laughs> yeah. So Kiss, uh, Gene Simmons, I'm sure everyone would agree that Gene Simmons is so a real-life superhero. So Gene Simmons is a real-life superhero. On themselves. Blood. <laughs> Could you imagine trying to add Gene Simmons to the real-life superhero society? I don't, hasn't he been canceled or something? People don't like him anymore. I don't know why. I don't pay oh. attention. Is he I just have the, heard the bad things. Ones? I don't think he was me too, but I think he was canceled for political views or something. I really don't care. <laughs> He's not a relevant person in my life. Wait, you need a refill? We'll take a pause. Okay. Thank you. The funny thing is, I'm a huge, like, I watch a lot of these shows, but I didn't know people really did it. Hold on, hold on. We gotta pause the other one. I think puppies are the real heroes. Post traumatic syndrome, depression. You guys make people happy. No, I'm good. Pet therapy. They wear costumes. Although <laughs> typically it says don't touch. <laughs> exactly. And they always look sad. They're like, I want to be petted. Why is nobody <laughs> petting <touch>. me? <laughs> My whole goal in life is to be petted. I know, right? What are you doing? I was once in a grocery store when I was younger. And uh, it was one of the first times I'd ever seen an actual service dog out and about. I was in college. And this old lady was walking her dog. And I was on the same aisle. And uh, she was holding it, you know, by the leash. And it looked so sad. And I, like, made eye contact with it. And it kind of came over like it was coming toward me. And she, like, yanked it. She's like, no, you're working. <laughs> and I was oh, like, holy shit, you. that poor dog. I wanted to rescue it. Yeah. I was like, you're with a bitch. Oh, you man. are the servant of a bitch. Oh, you got the wrong person. This dog was like, please, I just want to be petted. <laughs> this woman does not love me at all. Oh, no, that didn't pause. Oh, well. Oh, no, and I said the name of that horrible bitch. <laughs> She's dead by now. This was 20 years ago. She's gone. <laughs> well, She's I'll just have dead. to. I saw to that. <laughs> we need super villains too, right? Oh, man. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. Well, if I accidentally forget to chop up around 31 minutes, then <laughs> that's what happened. Okay. You guys ready? Uh, what were you talking about? Um, kiss. Oh. <laughs> but I'm ready to move on back Scooby-Doo. on topic. Okay. <laughs> 